Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mimpus. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings. Um, so yeah, uh, there's two reasons that I'm doing this. Um, the first is I, I like Garfield, which I'll get back to in a moment. And the second reason is that, um, yeah, I've, I've been doing a lot of things that are not reading actual books of late. Uh, so I kind of fell down on the job, and uh, so we're doing this because Garfield Takes His Licks is short. Um, once in a while I pick a book just because it's short, rather than because I had, you know, some particular deep, meaningful reason. Okay, so, Garfield. Here's the thing. A lot of people like to make fun of Garfield. They like to make fun of... You know, people like to make fun of the long-standing uh, comic strips uh, for various reasons. They're, you know, they get tired very quickly. They're filled with the same jokes over and over again. I mean, not like Marmaduke, um, because Marmaduke wasn't funny to begin with. But um, the thing is, I mean, a Family Circus wasn't funny to begin with. Um, but the thing about the thing about this is, though, is that it's not just that, you know, these comics wouldn't be wouldn't be as popular as they are, wouldn't be in newspapers for as long as they are if there weren't people who liked them. The thing about Garfield is that Garfield is... Garfield is a character that speaks to everybody's internal laziness, everybody's internal cynicism. Garfield does it, and does it very, very openly. Um, now, I love Get Fuzzy as well, uh, and I may even talk about Get Fuzzy at some point, but the thing about Get Fuzzy is that in Get Fuzzy, Rob is just sad and trying to cope, and um, Satchel is, you know, Satchel is, is not that bright and just trying to cope. Um... You know, and and for some reason I can't remember the cat's name and get fuzzy. But the thing is that um, they're all they're clever, they're funny, they're witty. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of Garfield to be seen in it. Um, but the difference is that Garfield is just about those one-liners. It's just about you know, that those relationships with life and the universe and the people around you, um, where it's boiled down to its very simplest level, and it's boiled down in such a way that it will always have appeal. Um, you know, so look at this, the back cover, uh, which I did in part, in no small part, because it's actually colored. Uh, so I have at least one more colored uh, strip in this. And you look at John, who's being a big dweeb, because about half the time John is just being a big dweeb. And he's caught up in how beautiful a day in the country is, and there's Garfield. I'm dying, it won't be long now, I should never have eaten that frog. And, you know... This isn't about something inherently catly. Um, when you look at Get Fuzzy, you're dealing with a certain amount of just... of the pet psychology um, that Bucky Cat is very much a cat and Satchel is very much a dog and, and the canine and feline philosophy of being is on display with them. With Garfield, it's not really there. I mean, Garfield is a cat, and his catliness comes out in spades in cynicism. Because cats are fundamentally cynical, that's why you can train a cat, but you have to keep feeding it. Because dogs will work for patting, cats will look at you and say, Where is my food? You said you would pay me. If you're not going to pay me, I'm not going to work. Um... So Garfield's cynicism is inherently catly, and the fact that Odie isn't all that bright is inherently dogly, but it's not 
it's not really about cats and dogs and owners. It's about the fact that we've all been there listening to somebody go on beside us and all you're thinking is, God, I should never have done that thing. Why did I do that thing? Why did I eat that frog? Um, you know, the, the top one, Garfield, did you eat my licorice, homie? I mean, that's, you know, that's a standard interaction when John isn't being a dweeb, when he's just, you know, being aggravated and... Garfield is being not subtle because Garfield is many things, but he's not really fundamentally very clever. You know, he is sometimes smarter than John, and he's certainly very cynical, but he's not actually deeply clever. No, I did this for the bottom strip, where you have Garfield looking, you know, aggravated and and depressed as he's playing with this ball of yarn because, you know, cats are supposed to find balls of yarn absolutely hypnotizing and we're having some fun now, he says, as he's covered in the unrolled yarn. The thing about this is, this is one of those speaks to the truth of life. That is, when you look at those cliches that you try out, the we're going to Disney World cliche, the we're going to... Canada's Wonderland cliche, we're doing this thing that's supposed to be the most fun thing ever because television and pop culture has said that it should be fun. And you do it and you realize, oh, look at this mess. Oh boy, we're having fun. Um, and that's what you get in Garfield. You get, you get this, the cat is, is just a thin, a thin screen for how people actually feel. It's, it's almost like a pre-Dilbert, because Dilbert is, you know, the ongoing exasperation of dealing with life in cubicles and life at work. Um, Garfield is just that little bit step back where you're using Garfield to talk about this without actually directly talking about it. Kind of like when you use science fiction to talk about, I don't know, sexual politics, but because it's science fiction, nobody has to be actually offended because you're not talking about real people. Um, and I had this top one picked out because John is, he's exasperated and he's cynical and he's baffled but he's also one of the world's biggest dweebs. And, you know, we don't all necessarily know somebody like that, but we all feel like we could know somebody like that. Somebody who's just that much of a dork, that much of a nerd, that much of a... Look at this, it's Friday, time for a rousing game of Find the Ice Cube. That... That John stands in for all of that and gives us somebody to be sardonic at. Because, of course, there's only so sardonic you can be before you run out of things unless you have a John Arbuckle. And John, John always provides somebody, some way, some point that you can be sardonic at. Um... The bit below this is just about that kind of surreal universe that that uh, that Garfield lives in because, of course, there's Odie who his nose is on a string and you can yank it all the way out and no one will ever quite know how that works. Um, and, but... The thing is, of course, that it's not just Garfield who gets to be sardonic. It's John who gets to be sardonic. Here's the, 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 the diet quiz. Would you turn in your best friend for a jelly donut? I think I know the answer to that one. Because Garfield and John, despite the fact that John is a dweeb and Garfield is... Uh, you know, very lazy, and the, these two comic books actually come from, two strips come from a series when Garfield was on a diet at that particular moment in time. Uh, 
apparently sometime in mid-July in 1992, um, you know, that, 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 the two of them are well matched in terms of being taking turns being sardonic with each other. Uh, Rob from Get Fuzzy is far too often, far too confused all the time because he's actually trying to communicate with a cat and a dog, whereas John, John's given up. And John giving up uh, has sort of provided this point where he can't even care anymore about the fact that Garfield is supposed to be his cat because Garfield is so much more of a person. Um, and this particular Sunday strip, which is, of course, the ultimate, is very much just the Garfield and Odie relationship. Garfield drops the safe on top of Odie and Odie comes popping out and is entirely unaffected by things because, of course, normally in a comic or a cartoon, of the, what, whoever got the safe dropped on them is baffled and dizzy and confused and acting like something heavy got dropped on their head, but this is Odie. And nothing affects Odie. Well, once in a blue moon something affects Odie, but nothing affects Odie. And that's kind of his role. It, it, Odie is very much, in a lot of ways, is very much what the English would call gormless. Um, and it, it puts him in a very specific place that allows him to shock and surprise and also give Garfield a different foil to bounce off of that's not John, because while John is a big dweeb, you can still get a reaction out of him, whereas Odie, no, not really. Odie just is. He simply is. Um, and it's an intriguing thing, and... John Garfield and Odie are the heart and soul of these strips. I mean, you know, you have Liz, you have uh, Nermal, you have various other characters that show up at various points. But the basic fundamental of this is just watching Odie and Garfield and John just deal with each other. And like I said, Garfield and John are really much more like roommates than they are like, you know, pet and owner. That's the thing about Bucky Cat and Satchel the dog is they are still Rob's pets. Um, and they very fundamentally seem much more like Rob's pets. Whereas Garfield, Garfield is much more like if John had had a roommate and that roommate had been spontaneously transformed into a cat, like happens way too much in fan fiction. Um, seriously, if you if you look on fan fiction, you will find it. It's a trope somewhere, people getting turned into cats. Anyways, um, and so... I like Garfield. I like... The way it's sardonic, I like the simple humor, I like the way that Garfield's eyes don't fully open unless he's genuinely shocked. I like these comics. I find them funny. Um, and so, you know, people can, can be exasperated about Garfield, can be sarcastic about it, can make fun of it, but the fact is, they are funny. Eventually, yeah, they start making the same jokes over and over again, but, you know, everything does eventually. I mean, unless you're going to, you know, watch something jump the shark, in which case, well, then that's just sad. Um, so, Garfield, that's, that's my one book for the week, uh, in this particular case, it's one of the small Garfield collections, the 24th one. I could have picked any number of other, any number of other Garfield things, but that's the one that I landed on. Um, so we're coming up on the end of my 15 minutes, and I will have an actual book book for you next week. Um, in the meantime, just think about it. You don't have to like Garfield, but... You could maybe, you know, if you're one of those people who really, really makes fun of it, you could dial back on the ire at it. Uh, anyway, 
that's everything. So I'll see you all next week.